The loan table is probably the least friendly looking one, so let's see if we can uh, make that a bit easier to use when we want to uh, lend somebody a book. So let's go to create and create the form design. Um, so when we borrow a book, we need to save the information into the loan table. So I'm going to select the data tab and save the information into table loan. But what information are we going to save? If we have a look at the existing fields, um, what we've got is things like membership number and ISBN. And they're not easy to find uh, just by looking at a person and looking at a book necessarily. So what we might want to do is select the person by name. So let's have a look how we can go about that. So if I just drag membership number on there, that will just give me a text box into which I can type uh, a membership number. So what I probably want to do is add a combo box so I can select a name from a list. So let's have a look at how I do that. So select a combo box, add it to the form. So where am I going to get the information from from that combo box? So we've looked at previously at typing information in, so male and female. If there's a limited number of choices, we can type them in. But in this particular case, I think we want to get the information from the borrower table. So we've got a table of people, so we can use that. So we'll choose that top option and we'll go next. So which table or query should provide the information? So where's the information coming from? It's coming from the borrower table. And then which pieces of information do we want to see in the list? Well, we need to save the membership number because that's what's stored in the table but we want to see the name of the person, so forename and surname. Now I've got quite a small library, we've only got four borrowers at the moment, um, but if I had a bigger library, I might want to include something that would um, you know, differentiate people with possibly the same name if they didn't know their membership number, so I might also include um, date of birth. So I'm gonna click next, and I can have an order. So I'll sort these people into order of surname, and then by forename, so it's easier to find them in the list. Now one of the good things about Access is it allows you to show one thing, for example the name, but actually store in the database something else, such as the membership number. So in this particular case it's asking me if I want to hide the key column and it's, in fact it's ticked that for me, so I'll just untick that to show you. So we've got three columns in the, uh, the table here, um, the first one's the membership number and then we've got the forename and the surname. We don't need to see necessarily if we're selecting people by name and um, what their membership number is so let's just um, tick that and then we can adjust if you want to the column widths at this stage to take into account uh, possible longer names but you can also do it at a later stage as well. So just get that looking right and then we'll click next. The next thing it's asking me is what I want to do with the value that's been selected. So do I want to remember that for later use? Well, the way it describes that is a little bit sort of misleading. It's not kind of storing it somewhere. It's just literally staying on the form. So if I close the form, it'll be lost, but it means I can use that value in a calculation, for example. But in this particular case, what I want to do is take that um, membership number and store it in the database. And where do I want to store it? Well, it's the membership number. I'll store it in the membership number field. So we're going to store... The, that value in there. And then the final question is what label would I want for my combo box? So the label is the bit that appears to the left of the box and so that's going to be, uh, let's call it let's call it member or borrower. I suppose member and borrower um, sort of synonymous in this uh, library. Okay and that's the end so we just click finish. So what we see here is we've got the combo box and we've got the um, label to the left of it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the properties for this combo box before we go any further because it asked me what name I wanted for the label but what it didn't do is ask me what name I wanted for the actual control. So if we drag um, fields on from um, the list of existing fields, so from here, so if I drag one on there for example, when, if I look at the properties um, in, in the other section you can see that it gives it the same name and the same label as the as the database field name. If you add it yourself, it doesn't do that. So if I click on my um, combo box that I've just added, it's actually called combo one. 
And if you do that several times throughout the, uh, the form, it can get a bit confusing, particularly when you start referring to these things in uh, Visual Basic, which we might want to do later on. So it's a good habit to get into to give it a proper name. So I'm just going to call it, it doesn't need to be exactly the same as the field name, but I'm just going to give it enough of a name so I remember which one's which. So I've called that member. OK, um, that doesn't appear anywhere, but you can use it uh, in macros, etc. So let's just have a look what that does. So I'm going to go to uh, the form view and we can see that um, the member name appears. So what it's showing me here is all four records. So I can click um, next and it'll move um, to the next record. So combo boxes can also be used to look up information from the table because this loan table, remember, is actually got the membership number in there so it's it's also it also looks up the membership number to see what the, the corresponding person's name is um, so it's, it's just displaying a single name and the reason it's displaying a single name is it because it can only show one column so when I drop it down it's got two columns with the forename and the surname in there and in fact they're they're not the right way around so what I could have done in that wizard was drag them and put the forename uh, on the right and the surname on the left, but we're going to change that anyway. So that's not particularly nice because if I select um, John Smith, for example, and what, it just says John, and there's probably going to be quite a lot of those. So let's uh, let's just tidy that up. So if I go back to the design view, if I go to the properties of the combo box and I choose data, uh, we see the control source. That's where the information is going to be saved. It's going to be saved into the membership number. Um, field in the database but the row source um, is where the information comes from so just actually just before I do that I'm going to select the data tab for the form as a whole and I'm just going to change that to data entry um, yes so I can enter a new loan and I'm just going to go here and I'm going to turn off the uh, record selectors and navigation buttons so back to the combo box if I go to data this the row source is the information where that comes from um, to fill that list so if you click the the button with the three dots at the end you've got a bit more control over how that appears and how it's sorted so effectively what you've got here is a query so all the things we learned in the query videos we can also apply here including renaming fields um, using the builder etc now more recent versions of access seem to do this strange thing where I've sorted these uh, um, fields they've, they've actually appeared twice so that's not really necessary there's no reason why you can't just sort there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the full name and the surname in the same column. So I'm going to delete um, the other three columns and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the builder here to construct um, the full name and the surname in the same column. Now I want to sort in order of surname so I'm going to have surname first. So I'm going to choose the builder and in the builder I can choose the table. So in the from the borrower table what I want is surname first and you can join text together using an ampersand. So I'm going to say the surname and um, a comma and a space. And then we're going to add the forename. OK. So, and again, if we want to, we can rename that column. Although it doesn't actually make any difference in this particular case because we don't just get to see the column headings. The information is just being used to fill the combo box. OK, so I'm going to save that and close. So let's have a look at that now. So we go to the, the view. And now we've got the whole name in the first column, but it's still got the two columns. And the reason for that is that's a separate property. So if we go back to design view, if we go to the format um, tab, we've got um, these fields here. So we've got column count. So that's how many columns of information. Um, so we've removed one, so let's change that to two. And then the column widths we've also got. So we don't need that third width because we haven't got a third column anymore. So when you choose to hide a column, basically it just makes it width zero. So I can add that extra width for the column we've deleted onto the um, second column. 
So I can make the first, so the second column wider, which is the first one we actually see. So if I look at this now, we can see that I've got all of the information in the one column. And if I select one of those, then it, the whole name appears in the box. So that's quite handy. It's not sorted. So it's telling me that also, because I, I, can, I can only enter one of the fields, I can't actually enter the other information, that's not enough information to be able to save that record. So if you want to cancel this record, I can just press the escape key before I go back to the design view. So what I forgot to do there is I forgot to sort them. So if I go back to the query, and I can just add that information there to sort them to sort them into ascending order. Okay, so yes, want to save. So let's have a look at this now. Hopefully this will be right. So there, there, they're in alphabetical order. It's all stored in one thing, and we can um, select one. But more usefully, if it's a very long list, we can type um, one letter or as many letters as required to select the first. Uh, matching uh, name from the list so that's quite useful um, now it's a little bit small you might have noticed to display the longest name so that's literally just a property of um, the field there or the combo box in design view so if I just make this a bit wider um, that should be okay also notice there that I need to cap need my caption on my form so let's call that um, new loan Okay, so we've got our membership number, so we know who we're lending the book to. What we don't know is which book it is. Okay, so um, let's add the extra information for the, the book. So in a similar way, it's probably useful to be able to choose the uh, book from a list as well. So what I'll do is I'll add another combo box. And... Um, what we'll include here, so combo box is, well, we'll look up the information, so we don't have to type in the list of all the available books, but if you think about it, you can't borrow a book that's not there. So rather than looking up the list of all books from the book table, what we could do is use the query that we've already created and just fill this list from the books that are in stock at the library. That will have two benefits. Firstly, it will mean that you can't enter invalid information because you can't borrow a book that's not there. But also, it makes the list shorter and easier to scan through, doesn't it? So if you use the books in query, and again, we can choose what information we want to appear. So we need to save the ISBN, so I'll pick that. And I'm going to include the title and the author, but I've learned from my previous combo box that actually if I add more columns than I want, then I've got to go through and tweak the widths and change the column count. So I'm just going to put one in, and then I'm going to go and tweak what that one column contains. Okay, so I'm going to sort on um, title, and um, I'm going to hide. So this time, because of the way the... Um, tables because, well, because it's a query and it hasn't got um, a primary key it doesn't know which one to hide but I can hide it myself just by making that column zero width and I can make the title bigger now I'm going to add the name of the author to the end of this so I'm just going to make it a bit bigger still to give me a bit more space there we go and then I'm going to go next and what I want to store it from this uh, combo box is the ISBN and where am I going to store it? So as the last time, I'm going to store it in the ISBN field in the database. And then we'll call that um, book. And finish. And again, I'm going to remember to go over here to the other tab. And I'm going to call that book. And I can, I can line those up and do other stuff if I want. Now, that's not very big, is it? So I'm going to make that quite a bit bigger. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to add that extra information. So I'm going to go to data and my row source and I'm going to update um, the title so again we don't need that but we'll we'll, we'll we'll sort that so I'm going to say build so I'll start again so I'm going to go to um, not table but query this time and books in and we're going to take the title and just in case there's two books with the same title, I'm going to add some additional information. So I'm just going to add um, in brackets. So I'll add a bracket, and then I'll add the name of the author. 
and then I'll close the bracket and click OK and then again I don't need to do that but I'll just rename that column book save that go back to my form so now if I have a look at my form I should be able to select a, um, a person and I should be able to select a book however there's nothing in my list of books so let's see, if we have a look at my loan table um, well that's because in fact I'm not sure why so let's go back and have a look at our uh, loan table so let's go back to the design uh, view for that and let's have a look at my row source Aha, it's because somehow that's got unticked. So I want to show that information. And um, I can go back now and hopefully that should work. I do want to save that change. So now if I look at this, there we go. We've got a list of all the books that are in. So I can borrow three of the books. And if we look at the loan table, uh, we can see that um, three of the four books that have been borrowed have been bought back. So only one of them out is, out, is out on loan. So that looks right. Okay, so what I can do then is I can go back and add the extra information that I require. So I'm going to add, I'm just going to use the existing field things here. So we can add um, date out and date due. Um, what we don't need to add, actually, we don't need date returned at this particular point because um, they're not going to return it at the same time as they're borrowing it. So what I would also do to finish this off is to um, add a header and a footer. And I haven't, I haven't coloured this or anything, so I'll put a title in there, a new loan, and what I would do is add, add a button. So I'm just going to do a slight bit of tidying up, but um, there we go. So I'd also title, uh, change the labels, etc. Um, so the button we want to, to save this information uh, will be to add this information to the table, won't it? So if I add the button, what we want to do then, remember this field, this form is bound to the loan table. So what we want is a record operation. And what we want to do is we could save it, but a good idea is to save it and move to a new record so that it's blank ready for the next customer to come along. So I'm going to choose add new record. I'm going to choose um, a name. So I'm going to call it save. And I'm going to use the ampersand to underline the S so I can do alt S to save. And I'm going to call that, I'm going to give that a name, so I'm going to call it button save again. So if I do any programming later on, I can uh, refer to that more easily. So I'm going to click finish, and that's my button. So let's then um, see if that works. So at the moment, we've got four records in our loan table. So I'm just going to close that. I'm going to go open our um, new loan form and I'm going to choose um, Joanne Avery. She can borrow uh, databases for dummies and I'm going to leave those default options. So she's borrowing it today. She needs to bring it back on the 14th of July. If I click save, it goes blank, ready for the new person. It hasn't cleared those out. Well, it has cleared them, but then it's put the default um, back in. Okay, so if we have a look at the um, the loan table now, it should have a fifth record in it. And uh, we can see that uh, there it is. So borrowed today, due back on the 14th of the 7th, and it's not yet returned. So that's a form uh, using um, combo boxes. Combo boxes that we've uh, created to take the choices from a database table or database query but we've also uh, looked at the properties there the, the row source to alter the information that appears to change the widths and the number of the columns um, what we'll do in the next video is have a look at the other key function which is what should happen when we bring a book back